OK, let's, uh, we've established that price elasticity demand then shows us the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. So, let's have a think about some of the factors that would affect that. Let's suppose that um, you go into, uh, let's suppose that you go into shop um, to buy your normal product, newspaper, you know, whatever it turns out to be, can of, kind of coat, Mars bar, and you discover the price has gone up. The question is, what's going to determine whether or not you turn away from that product and buy something else, or whether you keep on buying it? And there are a range of factors here that are relevant. Um, and we can say that, you know, firstly, the number of substitutes. So, if there are, you know, if we take a, if we take a Mars bar, there are a whole range of other chocolate-related products that you could buy on this occasion. Yeah, you can have nuts, you can have no nuts, you can have milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white chocolate, caramel, no caramel. You know, everything under the sun exists. So, if the price of your product goes up significantly, you say, well, I won't buy it. I'll buy something else. So, a high number of substitutes tends to lead to a more than proportional change in demand. Therefore, demand tends to be price elastic, or a high price elasticity demand. A second, uh, second factor that you might, uh, you might consider um, is how necessary the product is. Some people link this to the number of substitutes, but yeah, but when we're trying to understand it, it can make sense to, um, to separate it out. Is the product a necessity? So if we compare the price elasticity demand for gas or water, yeah, or petrol, yeah, then a lot of these products are, are extremely necessary. We've got to heat our homes, yeah, we've got to, well, we've got a bath, ideally, um, and, you know, and we've got to drive our cars to work. Um, so, if the price of these products goes up, what you'll tend to find yeah, is that price elasticity of demand is inelastic, usually for these products, because demand changes less than proportionally following a change in price. Although, of course, yeah, when the price of anything goes up enough, yeah, as we showed before, yeah, if price goes high enough, eventually people will be priced out of the market. Demand will eventually become price, demand will eventually become price elastic, um, even with something like water, um, if the price rises high enough. People simply won't be able to afford it. Other factors, um, other factors that um, are important, apart from the number of substitutes and uh, when the product is a necessity, um, you might also think about what proportion of income is taking. So you're thinking now about, say, you know, the price of you know the price of a packet of crisps. Um, price of, I don't know how much packet of crisps is these days, but let's let's suppose that let's suppose that the price of a packet of crisps is forty p. Yeah, um, normally you walk into the shop and you find it's, it's 50p. I mean, that's a 25% increase in price. But the question is, what well, do you care? Speaking personally, I, mean, I don't even know how much packet crisp costs. Yeah? Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't phase me in the slightest. Because although it's a 25% increase in price, it's only 10p. It's a very small percentage of my income. Therefore, I don't really care. So when price goes up, I'm not particularly bothered. And therefore, there will be a less than proportional change in demand, and demand will be price inelastic. Other factors that um, other factors that might be important, um, apart from the proportion of income, um, you might sometimes think about you know, some products. Um, you know, some products. You know, you think about firm strategies, they want to make demand price inelastic if, if they can. Yeah? So you think about you know, brand loyalty, um, advertising, that type of, that type of factor. Yeah? 
then you know, people will pay absurd prices for Gucci handbags and, and products of that nature. Um, you know, so they can, you know, they can essentially put the price up, it would seem more or less as much as they want, and demand falls less than proportionally. I mean, some would even argue that maybe the demand curve is, is perverse, it goes the other way, yeah, that high price leads to more demand. But what we're saying then is that you know, if we take more moderate brands like you know, Coca-Cola or something like that, they can increase their price more safely than a generic brand because consumers are brand loyal. So an increase in price, again, is likely to lead to a less than proportional decrease in demand. And again, products therefore that have brand loyalty tend to be price inelastic. Lastly, um, the last main factor that, um, that you might be called on to explain uh, might be um, the difference between, might be time period. What time period um, are we considering? Are we considering the short run or the long run? And what you'll generally find yeah, is that you go into the, you know, you, you, know, you, you, come, you come home um, you come home on the train, it's late in the evening, you get into a taxi, you discover the price has gone up, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do, yeah? In the short run, yeah, there is no time to look for substitutes. And therefore demand will be price inelastic, usually. In the long run, you've got more time. Yeah? Um, in the long run, um, if the price of your normal newspaper goes up, you can try alternatives. Yeah? You can test out other ones until you find one that you like. In the short run, you may stay loyal. In the longer term, demand will be more price elastic because there is more time to find a substitute. And then when price goes up, you're more likely to switch away. So, five key factors, some of which overlap to be fair, but number of substitutes, um, the whether a product is a necessity or a luxury, the percentage of income that it's taking, whether consumers are brand loyal, and what time period are we looking at it over.